Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I'm super excited to show you guys this head-to-head -head comparison between the EcoFlow River Pro and the Blue Eddy EB70. Now EcoFlow sent out the River Pro for review and instead of doing a normal review video, they wanted to step it up and do a head-to-head -head comparison between one of the closest competitions, which is the Blue Eddy EB70. Now these have similar capacities and they do have a little bit difference in battery chemistry and features and you're gonna find out about all those differences in this video today. Now I'm gonna have 20 different ways that we're comparing these head to head and we're just gonna fly right through them. We're gonna do stress testing. We're gonna do capacity testing. We're gonna look at the regulated output. At the end, we're gonna tally up all the points and we're gonna see which one comes out on top. Now let's first go ahead and jump right into the specifications and some pricing details on each of these power stations. So we're first gonna compare the advertised capacity and the battery chemistry between these power stations. So the EcoFlow River Pro comes in at 720 watt hours of capacity. It has lithium ion batteries in it that are rated at 800 life cycles to 80% capacity. Meaning after 800 life cycles, you use 20% of the original capacity of the battery and you can continue to use it. Now the Blue Eddy EB70 is rated at 716 watt hours, so slightly less than the EcoFlow River Pro. It has lithium iron phosphate chemistry inside, and it's rated at 2000 life cycles to 80% capacity. So let's go ahead and break these down on a cost basis to tell you how much you're paying per life cycle. So the cost per cycle to 80%, we take the actual cost of the power station, which this is priced at $549 on EcoFlow website. We times that by 20% to get the cost of the top 20% of the battery, which is $109, divided by 800, and that gives us a cost of 13 cents per life cycle to 80%. Now we can do the same thing with the Blue Eddy EB70. This comes in at $519 on Blue Eddy's website, times that by 20% and divide it by 2,000 life cycles. This one comes out to be five cents per life cycle. So you have 13 cents per life cycle to 80% and five cents. So this is a good way to compare how much you're paying for each life cycle. So the Blue Eddy comes out on top in this comparison. Now moving on to the next comparison, the EcoFlow River Pro actually does have an advantage because of the lithium ion batteries inside. It actually takes up less space and is less weight. For example, this one comes in at 16.8 pounds and the Blue Eddy EB70 comes in at 21.4 pounds. And you can see there is a actual size difference between each of them. So if you are looking for a smaller and lighter weight power station, then this one wins that comparison. Now the next way that I want to break down the power stations is by the actual displays. The EcoFlow has a way better display. It shows you your watts input, your watts output. It tells you the estimated time remaining on charging or discharging and has an actual battery percentage. Now, one of the gripes about the EB70 is the display. It does not have a battery percentage or an estimated time remaining. It just gives you kind of a chunky battery capacity meter and it tells you the watts going in and out. So the EcoFlow definitely wins on the better display. Now in the next comparison, I wanna talk a little bit about the handle designs. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the Jackery style handle that just kind of takes up a ton of space, makes it way bigger than it needs to, and you can't stack stuff on the top. So let's compare the handle designs between these two power stations. Now the EB70 has a flat design where the handle actually comes up and then folds down when you don't need it. And I love that you can stack things on top of this power station. Now, if you look at the EcoFlow River Pro, the handle is fairly large on top, so it takes up a lot of additional space and it isn't recessed down. So if you actually compare the actual size of the power station versus the handle, the handle takes up a bit of room. So comparing handles to handles on each of these power stations, the EB70 is definitely gonna get a point. Now the next two comparisons we're gonna talk about are definitely advantages for the EcoFlow River Pro. So let's go ahead and start talking about them. The first one is expandability options. The EcoFlow River Pro has an expansion port on the side of the power station where you can hook in an additional battery pack that has 720 watt hours of capacity. So you can double the capacity of this power station by purchasing the separate battery. The Blue Eddy EB70 does not have expandability options. The next comparison is smart app connectivity. The River Pro also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, and you can control the power station via the smart app. The Blue Eddy EB70 does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity, so it does not have a smart app. 
Now the benefits to a smart app mean that you can uh, view what is happening on the power station even when you're away from home. As long as this connected to the Wi-Fi, you can see what's going on. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you can connect with Bluetooth and see what's going on as well. You can see the power going in or out. You can also change the charging rate and turn on and off each of the outputs. And the most important feature about the Smart App is that you can update the firmware on this. So definitely giving two points to the EcoFlow River Pro for expandability and Smart App connectivity. Okay, so in the next comparison, I actually did head-to-head -head testing on the AC inverters for both these power stations. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now the first test I wanted to do was a 500 watt load on the AC inverter to see what voltage and what condition the sine wave was in. So I put a 500 watt load on the EcoFlow River Pro. It was putting out a steady 120 volts and it had a pretty good sine wave with just a little bit of distortion. Now we did the same test on the EB70 with a 500 watt load on the AC inverter. This was putting out 110 volts which was a little bit less than what you got with the EcoFlow River Pro, but the sine wave was very clean. So I'm gonna have to give both of these a point on this because both of the AC inverters put out acceptable power and everything worked just fine. Now the next test I wanted to do was actually to test to see if they would start up my full-size fridge compressor because when you turn on a fridge, it has a ton of surge current, so we'll see how this handles it. So I first plugged in the EcoFlow River Pro to see how it would handle the fridge. Let's go ahead and see that footage. Now, as you can see, it had a problem starting up the fridge compressor. It could not handle the surge current and threw out the error on the screen saying it was overloaded. Now, I then tried the EB70 with the same fridge. I plugged it in and this is what happened. Let's go ahead and show you the footage. So as you can see, I got the same issue with both of these power stations and it was not able to start the compressor on this large fridge. Now this is a pretty old fridge. Maybe it has a lot of startup current versus other more efficient versions. So I don't know, maybe your mileage would vary, but I can't give either of these a point on a surge current test. Now I definitely wanted to test if either of these had any noise when I plugged them into a guitar amp. So I plugged in each one and this is how each one sounded. Now overall, I didn't notice any difference between plugging the amp into these power stations inverters versus my wall. So I think both of them uh, passed the noise test. So a thumbs up on that. Now the last test that I'd like to do is a full discharge test through the AC inverter. So I charge up both power stations and I put a 20% load and took it from 100% down to 0% and this is the capacity we were able to get. So on the EcoFlow River Pro, I was able to pull a total of 530 watt hours or only 73% of the advertised capacity. So 73% is kind of bad on this. I'm just gonna have to be honest there. I did the same test on the EB70 and I was able to get 580 watt hours, which comes out to be 81% of the advertised capacity. So neither of these actually scored 85% through an AC inverter discharge test, but this one did significantly better, almost 10% better on the advertised capacity. So I'm definitely gonna have to give this one a point there. Okay, so moving on to the next set of comparisons, we're gonna compare the DC output on both these power stations to see how they stack up. Now, both of these do have a regulated output. The EcoFlow River Pro is regulated at 13.5 volts DC, and the EB70 is regulated at 13.3 volts DC. Now, the next test I did was to see if they could run a 12 volt compressor fridge for 24 hours without shutting off. So I plugged in my SetPower FC12 to both of these power stations and ran them for 24 hours and neither of them shut off the DC output. So both of these are great options for running a 12 volt compressor fridge. Now the next test is kind of a stress test to see how much surge current both of these could handle. I have a Viair 12 volt air compressor that I like to run to pump up tires if I have a flat tire. And a lot of times it's good to see if these can run it. So I plugged it into the EcoFlow River Pro and this is what happened. So 
So as you can see, it can start the air compressor, but once I put a load on the air compressor, it could not handle the maximum current, so it actually shut off the DC output. But basically, you can't handle that much surge current on this one versus the EcoFlow River Pro. So definitely giving a point to the EcoFlow River Pro on this surge current for the DC output. Now, one of the most important things is just to see how much watt hours you can get out of the DC output with a full capacity test. So let me go ahead and show you the results for this test. I charged both these power stations up to 100% and discharged them at a 0.2C rate. And on the EcoFlow River Pro, I was able to get 665 watt hours or 92% on the DC output, 92% of the advertised capacity, guys. That's the best score that I've gotten on the DC output of a power station. So kind of bipolar here, worst AC output uh, capacity, but the best DC output capacity, Anyway, the DC output test results for the EB70 were 616 watt hours or 86% of the advertised capacity. So pretty good here, but definitely not 92%. So I definitely have to give a point to the EcoFlow River Pro on the DC capacity results. Now in the next comparison, we're gonna look at the front of each power station to see the charging options for mobile devices. Now taking a look at the EcoFlow River Pro, you have one 100 watt USB-C power delivery port and you have three USB-A ports, one of them being a fast charge port. Now looking at the EB70, you actually have two 100 watt USB-C outputs. You have two slow charge USB ports and you actually have wireless charging on the top of the power station. So when you're comparing them back and forth, the EB70 definitely gets a point here because it has more charging options for mobile devices. Now the last set of comparisons before we break down each one and total up the points is basically talking about charging both of these power stations. Now there is an advantage to the EcoFlow River Pro in charging and I'll show you how that works. Now, first off, let me tell you, both of these support pass-through charging without any issues, so we'll get that out of the way. Now, I wanted to test the actual solar charging, so I took both of these outside and I hooked them up to two 180-watt solar panels, so I was basically over-paneling these in very good sunshine to see the maximum amount of solar input, and I was able to get 197 watts input charging from solar panels on this, and I was able to get 167 watts charging input on the EB70. So definitely more solar charging input on the EcoFlow River Pro. So I'm gonna give it a point there. Now, when it comes to AC charging, EcoFlow is known for very fast charging on their power stations, and they also have built-in chargers. So there's no loud external charging brick. So this is definitely gonna get the point here. The EcoFlow River Pro can charge at 660 watts with the built-in charger and it does not have an external charging brick. The EB70 can charge at 200 watts, and it does have the external charging brick that the fan is always running. If you're gonna be looking for a faster charging power station via solar or via AC charging, you're gonna to wanna to go with the EcoFlow River Pro, and I love that it has a built-in charger and there's no external charging brick. Now there's one last thing that I wanna talk about concerning the battery chemistries in each of these power stations. For example, the lithium ion batteries in the EcoFlow River Pro do have an inherent risk for fire explosion, as it does mention on the bottom of the power station if it is punctured, short-circuited, or overcharged. Now the only reason I bring this up is because this last week while I was camping, I had a scary experience when we were powering a 12 volt compressor fridge with a lithium ion battery, and that battery actually exploded and caught on fire while we were using it as directed. Now, it's very important that every one of you understand the inherent risks that come along with purchasing a power station with these lithium ion batteries. Now, we actually use these lithium ion batteries on a daily basis, whether it be in your cell phone, your laptop, other small electronic devices, your power tools, e-bikes, electric cars, they all are using these same lithium batteries and you don't see issues of this happening every day. It's just if the battery is abused or if it is not designed properly. The good thing about EcoFlow products is they are designed and engineered in a way that they are safe. I just want you guys to be aware that there is an inherent risk because of my experience that I had this last week. Okay, so we're done with the comparison. I'm gonna throw a spreadsheet up on the screen to give you guys a total kind of overview of how the scoring worked. Basically, we took all the points of the EB70, it came out to 10 points, 
and all the points of the EcoFlow River Pro, and it came out to 14 points. So you can see the EcoFlow does have quite a bit of an advantage in some certain areas over the EB70. Now, all this information is just provided to you so you guys can know which power station is going to work right for you. So hopefully after this video, you guys can choose which one that you like more. Now, please throw a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this comparison. What power station is your favorite and why? I'd love to hear what you guys think about the comparison between these two and what you like about them. I definitely like the smart app and the expandability options on this and the fast charging is definitely a benefit. Now on the EB70, also I like that this has uh, the two USB-C 100 watt outputs and the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching the video. This was a super fun comparison. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already subscribed. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video.